All right, we've covered the basic foundations of Sangha Yoga, and we're now ready to begin the practice. Before we start the sun salutations, take your feet together and distribute the weight evenly across each foot. Keep the legs active, the kneecaps lifting. Drop the sit bones slightly. Keep the spine nice and long. Roll your shoulders down the back. Extend the arms long toward the floor. Lift the neck all the way through the top of your head. Find your breath. Stay with a full, deep breathing throughout the practice. Don't sacrifice the breath for a posture. It's better to remain with the breathing and follow that. Let the breath be your guide. Remember all of your options in the sun salutations, and we're now ready to begin. Move as far through the practice as is appropriate. Build the practice over time. And we're now ready. Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, both arms up with a full breath. Look up at your hands. Exhale, fold forward, lower your head. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take your feet back, lower, remember your options. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. And full deep breathing. Remember, your feet should be about six inches apart. The entire palm pressing into the floor. We're going to stay here for five counts. That should already be about two. Keep the spine long. Move the top of your head toward the floor. The heels move toward the floor, and your chest moves toward your feet. All right, that's four. Strong breathing. And five. Now as you inhale, take your feet forward, straighten your legs, and look up. Exhale, lower the head. Inhale, both arms up, full breath, the hands touch. Exhale arms to your sides and we'll continue right into the next one inhale arms up exhale fold forward empty the lungs inhale lengthen the spine look up exhale take the feet back lower all the way down inhale upward dog exhale downward facing dog position strong deep breathing remember keep the fingers spread wide the palms pressing down move the top of your head toward the floor as your chest moves toward the feet. The legs are active and the heels are pressing toward the floor as well. That's already three deep breaths. Stay with the breathing. Four, one more, and five. As you inhale, ride the breath forward, look up, straighten the legs, exhale, lower the head. Inhale, all the way up, full breath, the hands touch, and exhale, arms to your sides. Full breathing. Inhale again, arms up. Exhale, fold forward, lower your head. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take the feet back, lower to the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog position. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Stay with your breathing. Remember, if you're becoming fatigued, you could come down out of the downward facing dog position onto your hands and knees if you need to and rest there until we move on. Otherwise, remain in the downward facing dog position and we'll continue on. That's already three breaths, full breathing, lengthen the spine, four breaths, and one more breath, five. Take the inhale, jump forward, look up, lengthen the spine, Exhale, lower the head. Inhale, all the way up, full breath, hands touch. Exhale, arms to your sides. We've just got two more of Surya Namaskara A. Full breathing. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, take the feet back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, push the hips back. Full, deep breathing. Remember this is a breathing exercise. If you're becoming fatigued, it's okay to pause, but stay with your breath to maintain the heat. That's two and three. Both legs are active, the kneecaps are lifting, the heels moving even closer to the floor now. Four, one more full deep breath, five, and take your feet forward, look up, Exhale, lower the head. Inhale, all the way up. Full breath, the hands touch. Exhale, arms to your sides. 
Just one more. And inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, take your feet back and lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. You're doing great. Keep breathing full and deep. You should be feeling a nice heat in the body by now. Stay with your breathing. That keeps feeding the internal heat and cleansing and surcharging every cell with oxygen. That's three. Your arms are active. Keep the chest moving toward the feet so you lengthen the spine. Four. And one more breath. Five. As you inhale, take your feet forward, straighten your legs, look up. Exhale, lower the head. Inhale, all the way up, full breath, the hands touch. Exhale, arms to your sides. Stay with your breathing. We're now going to start Surya Namaskar B. Again, feet together, legs active. Bend your knees, inhale, look up at the hands. As you exhale, fold forward, lower the head, straighten the legs. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take your feet back, lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the right foot, back foot flat on the floor, arms up, and then exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs as you lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the left foot, both arms up over the head, full breathing, back leg active. Exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs, lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog position. Exhale, downward facing dog. Full breathing. Feet still about six inches apart. The body's heating up. You can now move further into the downward facing dog position. Keep lengthening the spine. Keep pressing both palms into the floor and moving the heels close to the floor now. That's already three breaths. Strong breathing. Four and five. Inhale, take both feet forward. Straighten the legs, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, lower the head. Bend your knees. Inhale, arms up. Keep the knees bent until the hands touch. Then exhale, arms to your sides. Legs straighten. And we continue on again. Inhale, bend your knees, look up at the hands. Exhale, fold forward, straighten the legs. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take the feet back, lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the right foot, both arms up, full breath. And exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs as you lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the left foot, both arms up. Fill the lungs. Exhale, fold forward, ride your breath and lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Strong breathing, one. And two. Keep the legs active. Three, four, one more breath, and five. Ride the inhale forward. Take the legs forward. Look up. Lengthen the spine. Legs straight. Exhale. Lower the head. Bend your knees. Inhale. Arms up. Full breath. The hands touch. Exhale. Arms to your sides as the legs straighten. Full breathing. We've got three more. If you're feeling fatigued, you can wait. Otherwise, we continue on. Bend your knees, inhale, arms up, full breath. Exhale, fold forward, straighten the legs, lower your head. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take the feet back and lower all the way down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the right foot. Take both arms up over the head, full breathing. And exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs, lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the left foot now. Both arms up, full breath. And exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs, lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. And again, full breathing. Legs active. Breath, 
strong yet relaxed. That's already two. Keep the spine long. Move the head a bit closer to the floor. Three. And four. Keep the palms pressing down. And five. Now, inhale. Take the feet forward. Straighten the legs. Look up. Exhale. Lower the head. Bend your knees. Inhale. Arms up over the head. With a full breath, the hands touch. Exhale. Arms to your sides. Legs straighten. Just two more. If you need to pause, do so. Otherwise, we're again continuing on. Bend the knees. Inhale. Look up. Exhale. Fold forward. Straighten the legs. Lower the head. Inhale. Look up. Lengthen the spine. Exhale. Take your feet back. Lower. Remember all of your options. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Strong legs. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Big step forward with the right foot. Back foot flat on the floor. Arms up. Lungs full. Exhale. Forward. Empty the lungs as you lower. Inhale. Upward dog position. Exhale. Downward facing dog position. Again, inhale. Step forward. Fill the lungs. The hands touch. Then exhale. Fold forward. Empty the lungs and lower. Inhale. Upward facing dog position. Strong legs. Exhale, downward facing dog position. And that's one. Again, two. Full breathing, three. Remember, if you need to pause, you can come down onto your hands and knees if your arms are feeling a bit fatigued. Otherwise, remain in the downward dog position. That's four. And one more breath, five. Now, Inhale, take the feet forward, straighten the legs, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees, keep them bent as the arms come up over the head with a big inhale. Exhale, arms to your sides, legs straighten. And just one more. Bend the knees, inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward, straighten the legs, lower your head. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, take the feet back, lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog, strong legs, open chest, exhale, downward facing dog. Big step, right foot forward, back foot flat on the floor, arms up, front leg bent. Exhale, both hands down, step back, empty the lungs. Inhale, upward facing dog position. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big step with the left foot, take your arms up over your head, back leg straight and strong. Exhale, fold forward, empty the lungs as you lower. Inhale, upward facing dog, full breath. Exhale, ride the breath back down into downward facing dog position. Full breathing as always. One, the heels should be very close to the floor now. Two, full breathing. Three, if your heels are still far from the floor, that's fine. Be happy with wherever they are, but make the effort to bring them toward the floor. And five. Inhale, take the feet forward, straighten the legs and look up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, look up at your hands. Full breath, the hands touch. Exhale, arms to your sides, legs straighten. Full, strong breathing. The body should be nice and hot now. We're ready to begin the standing sequence. The first standing pose, Parangustasana. With an inhale, jump the feet about six inches apart. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, lift the chest, drop the head back. Exhale, fold forward, reaching the big toes with two fingers. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward and breathe deep. If you cannot reach the feet in this posture, it doesn't matter. Just move as far as you can. If you feel discomfort, in the lower back, then bend the knees slightly. That's already three breaths. Try not to round the back. Keep the back straight if possible. Four. One more breath. Five. Now inhale, straighten the arms, lengthen the spine, look up. Pata hastasana, place your hands under the feet if you were holding your toes before. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward. If you are not holding your feet, it's fine for you to hold behind the knees if you need to. Hold your hands behind the legs if you can't reach your feet. That's perfectly fine. 
Don't overstretch. Move only as far as feels appropriate. Keep the spine long, extending deeper into the posture with the exhale. That should be four. Full breathing. And five. Now release the pose by inhaling, looking up. Exhale, take the hands to your waist, flat back. Inhale, all the way up, full breathing. Exhale, jump the feet together. Utita Trikonasana. Inhale, jump to the right, one leg's length distance between your feet. Turn the right foot out, the left foot in. Extend with your right hand toward the right foot. If you reach the foot, grab the big toe. If not, leave the hand on top of the foot or the ankle. Strong breathing. Keep the upper body rolling out over that right leg so you feel the stretch on the side of the body. That should already be about three breaths. Four. And five. Inhale, come all the way up, full breath. Turn the right foot in, the left foot out. Extend with the left hand toward the left foot, turning the gaze up at the right hand. Broad across the shoulders, Keep rolling the chest open as though you're trying to roll it open toward the sky. Both legs are active. They're both straight. That's already three breaths. Full breathing. Keep the spine long. Four. And five. Now inhale. Come all the way up. Turn the left foot in and the right foot out. Turn all the way to the right. Take the left hand across. Parvrita Trikonasana. If the left hand can reach the right foot, take it to the outside of the foot. Square the hips. Pull the right hip back and the left hip forward. The back foot should be turned in about 45 degrees. Remain broad across the shoulders and keep a spiraling motion happening in the spine. So not only are you twisting, but you're lengthening. And that's already five breaths. Release by turning your gaze to the floor with an exhale. Inhale, come all the way up. As you exhale, turn the right foot in, the left foot out. Take the right hand across toward the outer edge of the left foot. If you don't reach the foot, that's perfectly fine. You could leave your hand on top of the foot, the ankle, or even the shin if you need to. If you have reached the foot, you're working toward the outer edge of it. Either way, keep the hips squared. The left hip moving back, the right hip forward. Nice spiraling motion in the spine. That's already four breaths. Keep the breath nice and full. Exhale, gaze to the floor. Inhale, come all the way up. Full breath, feet parallel. Exhale, jump or step. Bring your feet together, facing the front of your mat again. Strong breath. Again, take it to the right with a nice wide stance, the distance between the feet greater than the length of one of your legs. Now, turn your right foot out. Bend the right knee. Check your stance for a moment. The right knee should be above the right heel. And we're ready for Parsvakonasana. Take the right forearm to the top of the right knee. If that's comfortable enough, you would move further into the actual posture, which is taking the right hand to the floor outside the right foot. Stay at whatever phase feels appropriate. If you need to leave the right forearm on top of the right knee, that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, the breath is full and deep and the hand is outside the foot. Keep the knee pressing against the arm and keep the chest rolling open toward the sky. And now inhale, come up, straighten the right leg, right foot in, left foot out. Bend the left knee, exhale, take the left arm to the top of the left knee or take the left hand outside the left foot whichever phase is appropriate to you. The back leg should be straight and strong, the heel flat on the floor, both legs active. Keep rolling the chest open toward the sky. That's already three breaths, full breathing, four, and five. Inhale, come all the way up by straightening the left leg, turn the left foot in and the right foot out. Bend the right knee again, turn the left foot in, Take the left elbow across to the outside edge of the right knee. Place your palms together and point the right elbow up at the sky. That's the first phase. Ultimately, you would take that left hand to the floor outside the right foot and the right arm beside the head. Stay only at whatever phase feels appropriate to you. Full breathing. Let's say that's already three breaths, 
Strong, full breathing. Keep the chest rolling open so you can achieve a full breath in this posture. And five. Exhale, turn your gaze to the floor. Then inhale, come all the way up. Straighten the right leg. Pivot, right foot in, left foot out. Bend the left knee. Take the right elbow across to the outer edge of the left knee. Place your palms together. Point the left elbow up at the sky. Or remember, the further phase would be to take that right arm to the outer edge of the left foot and breathe deep. Keep the chest rolling open and the spine long. Strong breathing. Try to keep that back foot flat on the floor as well. It's already three breaths and four and five. Exhale, gaze to the floor. Inhale, come all the way up. Turn the feet parallel and with an exhale, jump, feet together. We've already completed Parvrita Parsvakonasana, and we're now ready for Prasarita Padottanasana, A, B, C, and D. Inhale, take a jump to the right, wide stance, the outer edges of your feet parallel, toes turned in. Exhale, hands to your waist, the distance between your feet greater than the length of one of your legs. Inhale, lift the chest, full breath. Exhale, fold forward, hands to the floor. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward. You're striving toward having your hands and feet in one line across the floor. With about six inches between your hands where eventually your head would move. Both legs should be active. If you feel discomfort in the lower back, then bend your knees slightly. Use the abdominal muscles and the legs to pull the upper body through. That's four breaths already. Stay with your breath. Keep the spine long. Five. Now... Inhale, lift the head and the chest. Exhale, hands to your waist. Inhale, come all the way up, full breath. Exhale, pause. Inhale, arms up, broad across the shoulders. Exhale, hands to your waist. Inhale, lift the chest, full breath. Exhale, fold forward, Prasadita Padottanasana, B position. The hands remain on your waist. Both legs are active. If you feel discomfort in the back, then bend the knees slightly. Otherwise, both legs are straight and strong. The spine is long. You're using your locks. You're using Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha to help pull the upper body through. That's already four breaths and five. With the big inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale. Pause there. Inhale again. Both arms up, broad across the shoulders. Exhale. Take the hands back behind the back. Inhale, lift the chest, full breath. Exhale, fold forward. Your fingers are laced together. The hands are pulling over toward the floor. The breath is full and deep, both legs still active. Keep pulling the hands over, yet keep the chest open and keep the spine long. That should be about three breaths. Use your breaths to move you deeper into the posture. That's four. The exhale should guide you a bit deeper. And five. Use your inhale to lift you up. Come up slowly with control. Keep the chest open and the hands lifted. Then exhale, release. Hands to your waist. And again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to the waist. Inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Take the big toes with two fingers of each hand. If you can't reach the toes, hold behind the legs. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Keep the spine long, keep the elbows pointing toward the sky and broad across the shoulders. You're still using the locks, the abdominal muscles, Uddiyana Bandha and Mula Bandha to help move you deeper into the posture. This is Prasarita Padottanasana, D position. That's already four breaths, strong breathing, and five. With an inhale, lift the chest, straighten the arms. Exhale, hands to your waist. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, pause. Inhale, both arms up, broad across the shoulders. With an exhale, jump or step, face the front again. Full breathing. And once again, take it to the right. Jump, one leg's length distance between the feet. Turn the left foot in, the right foot out. Square your hips to the right. The left hip forward, the right hip back. Take your hands back behind your back in prayer fashion. If that's not possible, just hold the elbows. 
And then inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend out over the right leg. Parsvottanasana. Full breathing. Lengthen the spine. Take your chest toward the leg. Don't worry about getting your nose to your knee. Lengthen the spine. It should already be about two breaths. Three. Four. And five. As you inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, pivot. Right foot in, left foot out. Square the hips to the left. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend out over that left leg. Full breathing. Think in terms of taking your chest toward the thigh and your head toward the foot rather than rounding the back. Keep the hips square. The breath is full. It's already three, four, and five. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, turn the feet parallel, release the hands to the waist. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, jump or step, face the front again. Strong breathing, full breathing. We're now taking a vinyasa. Inhale, arms up, full breath. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take the feet back and lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Jump forward. Come up to a standing position with knees bent, arms up. Drop the sit bones, yet keep the spine long. Utkatasana. The ankles should be touching, the toes touching, the knees touching. The sit bones are dropped. You have opposing forces working. One is pulling you down into the earth. The other is lifting all the way from the sacrum up through the spine, up through the top of your head and your fingertips. That's already three, four, keep breathing, and five. Exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs, lower your head. Inhale, look up. Exhale, take your feet back and lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. Big step with the right foot. Take both arms up over the head. Back foot flat on the floor and straight. And full deep breathing. Virabhadrasana, warrior posture A. The same opposing forces are working. One is pulling the sit bones down into the earth. The other is extending up through the spine, all the way up through the top of your head. Your gaze is up past the thumbs. And five. Now straighten the right leg. Turn the right foot in and the left foot out as you pivot to the other side. Bend the left knee. Keep the knee above the heel. Full breathing. The sit bones are heavy. That's already two breaths. Keep the spine long. Your gaze is up past the thumbs. And four. One more breath. And five. Now we move into Virabhadrasana B position. Open the arms in line with the legs. Keep that left knee above the left heel. Don't let it roll in. Your gaze is out over the left hand. Full breathing. Move the upper right pelvis back and the inner left knee forward. The spine is perpendicular to the floor. The arms are broad. And five. Inhale. Straighten the left leg. Turn the left foot in, the right foot out. Bend the right knee. Your gaze is out over the right hand. The spine is long. The chest is open. You're broad across the shoulders, extending all the way through your fingertips. Strong breathing. Keep that right knee above the right heel. That's already three and four. Hold it. Deep breathing. Five. Exhale. Take both hands down on each side of the right foot. Step back and lower all the way to the floor. Inhale, upward facing dog, strong legs. Exhale, downward facing dog. And you want to come all the way through to sitting. Remember your options. You can either float through, jump, jog, walk, but come through to a sitting position, and we're now ready for the first sitting pose, Dandasana. Hands beside the hips. Keep the spine long. Roll the shoulders down the back. The back of the knees press into the floor. The heels move forward. The toes pull back. Full breath, the chin is locked into the chest. That's already three and four. Keep the breath full, remember your locks, and five. Inhale, arms up over the head, 
Exhale, fold forward, reaching toward the feet. Take the big toes with two fingers of each hand. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward. If you don't reach the feet, that's perfectly fine. Just hold the ankles or the shins. Even if your hands are near your knees, that's perfectly fine. But remember to extend forward with your chest at whatever phase you are in this posture. It's a forward bending. You want to lengthen the spine. That's already four and five. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the spine. If you were holding the toes, exhale forward. Reach around the feet with your fingers. Inhale, head up. Exhale forward, Paschimottanasana, B position. Both legs are still active. The knees press down, the heels forward, the toes are pulling back. Use your exhales to move you deeper into the posture. That's already three and four and five. Inhale, lengthen the spine, open the chest. Then exhale, extend even further, Paschimottanasana, C position. Reach all the way around, trying to grab your wrists. Repeat either of the two previous variations, if it's too much, to reach the third. The breath is full and deep. And that's three. And four, use your exhales to lengthen. And five. Inhale, head up, spine long. Exhale, release the pose. It's ready for our first jumping back vinyasa. Remember your choices and go back. If it's too much to jump back or float back, remember you could just do take it up asana or just wait if you need to. That's okay as well. Build your practice over time and come back through. Full deep breathing. We're ready for purvotanasana. The legs are straight. The hands are back behind the hips. Fingers pointing toward the toes. Inhale, drop the head back, push your hips up, the soles of the feet toward the floor. Full breathing, that's one. And two, hold it. Three, full breathing, lift a little higher. Four, if this is too much, keep your knees bent. And five, come all the way down to the floor. Once again, we have a vinyasa. Remember your choices. Take it up and jump back. Or wait if you need to, but continue through your vinyasa if you are, upward dog, downward dog, and coming back through to a sitting position. And we're ready for Ardha Bada Padma Paschimottanasana, half bound forward bending, right foot up on top of the left thigh, reach behind the back, forward with the left hand, inhale head up, exhale forward. If you can't clasp the foot behind the back, just take the arm behind the back and the left hand forward. Breathe deep. Three, four, five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. Once again, we have our vinyasa. Take it up. Jump back. Upward dog. Downward dog. And coming back through to a sitting position. Once again, ready for the left side. Left foot up. Reach behind the back with the left hand. Extend forward with the right hand. Inhale, lift. Exhale, extend forward. And breathe deep. That's one. Move just as far as you can. If you can't reach the right foot, then just hold the ankle. And if you can't clasp the left foot, just take the arm behind the back. That's already three breaths. Keep it full and deep. Four and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release and jump back. Moving through your vinyasa, upward dog, downward dog, and coming all the way through to sitting position. We're ready for Triang Mukai Ekapara Paschimottanasana. Take the right leg back, left leg straight, both knees close together. Extend forward with both hands, then lift the chest with an inhale, and exhale, extend forward. Remember the top of the right foot should be pressing against the floor. Don't let those toes turn out to the side. The left leg should also be active. If you feel like you're going to roll over in this posture, be aware of the position of your shoulders and your upper body. That should already be about four breaths and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. If you wish to, you could try jumping back from this position. Otherwise, release and jump back in the usual manner. Continue through your vinyasa and come back through. You can even jump into this pose if you wish. 
and the left leg is back. Extend forward with both hands, right leg straight. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, forward. Full breathing. That's one and two and three and four. One more breath. Keep the spine long. And five. Inhale, lift the chest. Full breath. Exhale, release. Take your vinyasa. Moving back. And you've got upward dog and downward dog. And again, coming all the way through to a sitting position. If the jumps become too much, remember you could leave them out and come back in when you're ready. Janu Shirshasana now. Right foot in to the inner left thigh. 90 degree angle between the knees. Extend forward with both hands toward the foot. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, forward. Full breathing. That's one. Keep the left leg active. Try not to round the back too much. Don't worry about getting your nose to your knees. Take the head toward the foot, chest toward the thigh. That's already four breaths. Keep it full and deep. And five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release. Take your vinyasa. If you're not taking a vinyasa, you would just change sides. Otherwise, you move all the way through it and come back through to sitting and we're ready for the left side. Left foot in, right leg straight. Extend forward, both sides of the torso moving ahead evenly. Inhale, lift the chest, exhale forward. Janu Shirshasana A position, left side. That's one, two, strong breathing. Three, four, and five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release. Take your vinyasa, moving back and upward dog and downward dog and come on back through. We're now ready for Janu Shirshasana, C position. This could be too much of a stretch for some of you, so I want you to repeat either A or B. Otherwise, take the right heel in the left hand, take your right arm through, reach over the foot, twist the foot, and bring it in. Release the hands, extend forward with both hands toward the left foot. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend forward. Eventually, your knee would be on the floor with a 45 degree angle between the knees. Keep the breath full and deep. Be very aware in these postures, especially with the joints. Don't overdo it. Don't move beyond your limits. Listen to your body. If it's too much at any point in any posture, back off. Okay, that's five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. Take your vinyasa. Or just change sides if you're leaving the vinyasa out for this moment. Work toward it later. Okay, you've come back through now, and you're ready for the left side. Remember, you can also just repeat one of the two previous poses. Don't overdo it. Extend forward with both hands. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend forward. Strong, full, Breathing, one, two, take responsibility for your practice. Remember, it's your practice. Don't worry about how far you think you should be in a posture. Just listen to your body, and it will tell you. And five, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, release. Take your vinyasa, moving back. There's upward dog, downward dog. And once again, moving all the way through to sitting position. Marichyasana A, B, C, and D. Raise the right knee. Keep the right heel in line with the sit bone of the right hip or to the outside of it. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, extend forward. Wrap the arm around the leg. Reach behind with the other hand. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend forward. Use that right arm against the right leg to extend forward with the chest to keep the spine long. And also remember to keep that left leg active with the heel moving forward. That's already three breaths and four and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. Take your vinyasa. You can even jump out of that posture if you choose to. That could be something to work towards. And move through your vinyasa and you're ready for the other side.
bend the left knee, left foot in, lift the left arm, exhale forward, wrap around the leg, clasp hands, inhale chest up, exhale forward. If your hands are not clasped behind you, that's fine. Just keep the arms behind the back, eventually working toward holding the arms together behind the back. Otherwise, the breath is full. The left arm is pressing against the left leg to assist, extending forward with the chest. That's all ready. Four, one more breath, and five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. Take whatever method of vinyasa is appropriate to you and move. Inhale. Upward dog, exhale, downward facing dog, come all the way through to sitting. We're now ready for Marichyasana B. The left foot moves into half lotus, and then you raise the right knee. If that's too much for the left foot up there, then leave the left foot on the floor. Otherwise, it's in half lotus, raise the right arm, inhale, exhale, extend forward, wrapping around the right leg, left arm behind. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend forward. Keep some space between the left knee and the right foot so you can extend forward, trying to take your head toward the floor. Once you can get the head down, you would move your chin toward the floor. Don't overdo it. Listen to the body. The same dynamic is pressing that arm, the right arm against the right leg to help you move forward. And five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. You could even jump out of that posture if you wish or release and take your favorite method of vinyasa or wait and change sides. So you've moved on through the vinyasa, coming back through, or you've changed sides, and we're ready for the left side. The right foot moves into half lotus or the right foot on the floor. Raise the left knee. Extend with the left arm up. Inhale, exhale forward, wrap around. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend forward, and full deep breathing. Marichyasana B position. Extend forward with the chest, taking the head toward the floor or the chin toward the floor. If the head is nowhere near the floor, don't be discouraged. Stay where you are. Find your progress within each day's practice. And five. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release. Once again, take your vinyasa back. Whatever feels like the appropriate way for you to move through the vinyasa, and coming all the way back through, we're ready for Marichyasana C position. Raise the right knee. Left leg is straight. Take the left arm across to the outer edge of the right knee, right arm behind. Press it into the floor. Lift the chest, lift the spine, pull the right shoulder around. If that's easy enough, then take the arms back behind the back, wrapping the left arm around the knee. You could have already moved into that phase if that's appropriate for you. Otherwise, remain in the first option, which is just the left elbow pressing against the outer right knee and the right hand pressing into the floor. Keep the spine lifting in a spiraling motion. And that's five. Inhale, take your gaze back to the front. Exhale, release that side. Move through your vinyasa. Remember, if the jumps are too much, then just do take it up asana or wait, but keep breathing. And we're now ready for the left side, left knee up. Take the right arm across, left hand behind, lift the spine, looking back over the left shoulder. If you can clasp, do so, otherwise remain in the first phase of the posture, full deep breathing. The main thing is the spiraling action of the spine. So it's not only twisting, but it's lengthening all the way from the sacrum, all the way up the spine, through the neck and the top of your head. That's already four. Keep moving your ribs around the leg so you get a full breath. Five. Inhale, gaze to the front. Exhale, release. Take your vinyasa and upward dog and downward dog and coming back through to sitting position. We're now ready for Marichyasana D position. If this is too much, then you can repeat C. Otherwise, the left foot is in half lotus and the right knee raises. You're going to again twist, coming all the way across with the left arm, 
wrapping the left arm around the right leg, bringing the right arm behind the back and clasping. If that's far too much, then don't worry. Leave the left arm outside the right knee and the right hand on the floor behind you. And again, if it's too much to have that left foot in half lotus, you would just leave that left foot on the floor. Either way, whatever phase you're in, focus on the breath. Breath is yoga. And five. Inhale, gaze to the front. Exhale, release. Come out of the pose. Move through your vinyasa. And upward dog. And downward dog. And all the way through. Ready for the other side. Right foot in half lotus or leave it on the floor. Raise the left knee, come across with the right arm, reaching behind the back with the left hand, wrapping around the left leg with the right arm. If that's too much, remember the left hand would be on the floor behind you, right arm pressing into the outer left knee, the spine is long, the gaze is back over the left shoulder, the breath is full and deep. If you're feeling a bit restricted in your breathing, Lift the chest more. Work those ribs around the leg. And five. Inhale, gaze to the front. Exhale, release. Come out of the pose. Take your vinyasa and upward dog and downward dog and moving all the way through to sitting position. And we're ready for Navasana position. I'm going to give you some options. Bend the knees, hold behind the knees, then lift the feet. That's the first phase. Then release the hands, straighten the arms. Second phase. The full phase is to then straighten the legs and to breathe deep. Choose one of those phases. We'll do this five times, five breaths each. That's already one, two, strong breathing, three, four, and five. Take your hands to the floor, cross your legs, lift up, and down. And again, repeating the same thing at whichever phase of Navasana is appropriate. That's one, two, strong breathing. Eventually in this pose, not only will you do a take it up between each one, but you'll take it all the way to handstand position. That's five. Release the pose and take it up and down, and once again, one, two, three, four, and five. Hands to the floor, cross your legs, either take it up, or if you wish to give it a try, all the way to handstand, and again, one, strong breath, two, Three, keep the chest lifting. Four, keep your boat out of the water. Don't let it sink. Hold. Five, last one. Lift up. And down. Again, one. If you need to revert to bent knees, that's perfectly fine. Two, remember, don't sacrifice the breath for the pose. Three, four, and five. Take your appropriate vinyasa, take whichever vinyasa is appropriate for you, move through it. Come all the way through the sitting position, and we're ready for Garbha Pindasana. Cross your ankles, reach around the thighs, and hold the ankles with your hands. Sit up straight. That's the first phase of the pose. Once you can do that, you could try this in half lotus, putting one foot up, and then reaching around the thighs, and holding, and sitting up straight. Eventually, you'll sit in full lotus position and reach in around the thighs. The final pose is to sit in full lotus position, reach the arms through the legs, all the way up to the elbows, bend the elbows, rest the chin and the palms, look straight ahead, and breathe deep. Whichever phase you're in, be happy there and stay with your breath. Full breathing. Two three, four, five. And now, exhale, roll back, and inhale, roll up. Continuing in small increments as you exhale back and inhale up, rolling around on the floor until you come all the way around 
full circle, exhaling and inhaling and exhaling and inhaling until you come all the way back to the front and you roll up onto your hands and lift and breathe deep. And hold Kukutasana position for five deep breaths. One, two. If your hands are not through the legs, that's fine. Just do take it up asana with the hands behind the hips. That's perfectly fine. And five, exhale down. Take your vinyasa, release the pose, jumping back. And upward dog, downward dog, and moving all the way through. Sitting up straight, bring the feet in toward the groin. Let the knees roll out to the side. Take your fingers on top of the feet, your thumbs on the soles of the feet. Open the feet to open the groins. Lift the chest, Baddha Konasana position. Deep breathing. Now extend forward with the chest. Strong breath. At first you might move your head or your nose toward the feet, but eventually you're working the chest toward the feet, extending out with your head, rolling open from the hips. Don't overstretch. Remember to open the feet to open the hips. The breath is full. That's five. Now with an inhale, come all the way up. Sit up straight. Exhale. Release. Take your vinyasa. Jumping back. Moving through upward dog and downward dog. Jump all the way through to sitting position and open the legs wide in preparation for Upavishta Konasana. Keep the legs active. Keep the knees pointing toward the ceiling. Grab the feet as you exhale. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, extend forward. Strong breathing, moving the chest toward the floor. Again, don't overstretch. Keep the thighs rolling back so the knees and the feet do not roll in. You want to keep them active. And that should be about five breaths. Now change your grip, grab the big toes with two fingers, and with a big inhale, pop up to a sitting position. Hold that, and release. Take your favorite vinyasa, jumping back, or just waiting, moving through upward dog, and downward dog, and once again, coming all the way through, sitting position, Rolling back onto your back with the feet spread wide. Grabbing the big toes. The same position, but you're upside down now. Supta Konasana. Hold the toes. Keep the spine lifting. As much as possible, keep the weight on your shoulders and not on the seventh cervical of your spine. That's already three breaths. Keep it full and deep. Four. And five. Use your inhale now to roll forward and balance. Pause there on your sit bones. Hold it for a moment. And as you exhale, extend forward, letting the backs of your legs hit the floor first. Don't crash your heels into the floor. Then inhale, sit up. Exhale, release the feet. And once again, take your vinyasa, jumping back in whichever way is appropriate for you. Moving on through. Jumping through and lying down on your back. We're ready for Supta Parangustasana. Raise the right leg. Left leg is on the floor. With an inhale, you take the big toe. Exhale, lifting the chest toward the leg. Left hand sliding down the left thigh. The breath is full and deep as usual. The left leg is working. And that's two. Stronger breathing. Pull the leg down as you lift the chest. Three, four, and five. With an inhale, take the head to the floor. With an exhale, take the foot to the right. Now, if that was too much to be holding the toe with the right hand, you could have held behind the leg. And we take it to the side now. If it's too much to hold the foot, you would be holding the knee or behind the leg just as in the standing pose. And that should be about five. Now inhale, come back to the center. Either take the foot and pull it down toward the floor or hold behind your leg, pulling it down. If holding behind the leg is also too much, then you would just bend the knee and pull the knee in toward the chest. Either way, 
The breath is full. The left leg is still active. And that's four and five. Release the right leg, slowly letting it down to the floor. Now inhale, lift the left leg, taking the big toe with two fingers of the left hand, right hand on top of the right thigh. Lift your chest toward the leg as you exhale and breathe deep. That's one, two. Remember, if it's too much to hold the toe, you could be holding behind the leg now. But keep the abdominal muscles working as you're lifting the upper body toward the left leg. Four, five. Inhale, lower your head to the floor. Exhale, open the foot to the left and turn your gaze to the right. This is the same as the standing pose. You're opening to the right, either holding the toe or if necessary, the leg is bent or maybe you're holding the knee. Full breathing. Three, keep the right leg active. Four. And five. Inhale, come back to the center. Again, taking the foot with two hands and pulling it down toward the floor or hold behind the leg. In this phase of it, your head remains on the floor. You're no longer lifting the chest toward the leg, but you're pulling the leg down toward the head only. The opposite leg, the right leg, is still working. Three and four and five. Inhale, head to the floor. Exhale, release. Left foot down. Now, to get out of this posture, we've got chakrasana, which is rolling back somersault. Lift the knees up, roll back over, the hands a bit close to the feet, so you hop them forward, then lift upward dog, downward dog, and jumping all the way back through and lying down on your back. If that chakrasana rolling method was too much for you, then it would have been appropriate just to sit up and jump back. Now, roll all the way back onto your shoulders. Grab the big toes, two fingers, and roll up. Ubaya Parangustasana. You're balancing on your sit bones. The chest is lifting. Your gaze is pointing up in the direction of the arms. The breath is full and deep. Both legs are active, and your head is dropped back just slightly. That's three. Work on your balance. Four. And five. Exhale, release the pose, take your vinyasa, moving back, and then upward dog, downward dog, come all the way back through, lie down on your back, this time hold the outer edges of your feet, and roll all the way back up onto your sit bones, balancing again, legs straight full deep breathing. If it's too much to hold the feet, then hold the ankles. You might even need to have the knees bent slightly. Otherwise, we're in Urdhva Mukha Pashramottanasana. The breath is full and deep. You're lifting the chest toward the legs. Your gaze is up past the toes. That's four. Full breath. Five. And exhale. Release. Take your vinyasa. Moving back. And then upward dog and downward dog. And coming all the way through again, lie down on your back. Beginning with the legs straight, let your feet roll out to the sides, heels together. Now leave the feet on the floor, bring them halfway into your hips. Keep the toes turned out to the sides. The first phase of this is to leave the shoulders on the floor and to lift the hips. This is Setu Bandhasana. Otherwise, the next phase would be to come back down from there, press the elbows down, roll the head under, press the feet, lift the hips all the way into the air. Full Setu Bandhasana position. Full breathing. That's two. And three. Stay with your breath. If you need to support your hips with your hands, that's fine. Otherwise, the arms are crossed across the chest. And five. As you exhale, release the pose. Once again, we have the chakrasana, rolling back method of getting out of this. If that's too much, just sit up and jump back or wait for the next pose. That was the last posture of primary series. We're now entering the finishing sequence. So lie down on your back again. Leave your feet on the floor. 
Bend your knees, bringing the heels in toward your buttocks, about hips width apart. Reach toward the ankles and grab them with your hands. If that's too much, if you can't reach the ankles, leave your hands on the floor. Otherwise, hold the ankles, press the hips up in the sky, and breathe deep. Your shoulders are still on the floor. You're rolling the shoulders under, keeping the weight off of your neck. The feet remain parallel, and the breath is full. It's already three and four. Keep both feet flat on the floor. And five. Exhale, come down. That was a little preparation for back bend. We'll do this two more times. I either want you to repeat what we've just done, or if you wish to take it a bit further, we'll move into Urdhvadhanarasana. Take your hands under your shoulders, and then press with the hands and feet, and push your hips up to the sky, and breathe. Try to keep your feet parallel and press the whole hand into the floor. If this is too much, remember, remain in the previous phase. Don't overdo it. And that's four. Stay with your breath. Keep it full. And five. Exhale. Lower. Pause there for a breath or two. Stay with your breathing. And then we're ready to move back up one more time, either repeating the preparation for this or Urdhvadhanarasana. Deep breathing. One. Two, three, four, and five. Exhale, come down. Bring your knees up into your chest and give yourself a big hug. Pull them into your body. Roll around on the lower back a little bit, giving a counter stretch to the back bend. Inhale and exhale, rolling forward and back. Come right up to a sitting position. Straighten your legs and move into Paschimottanasana forward bend. Just give a little counter stretch to that back bend. Great. Now release. Jump back. Move through a vinyasa, upward dog, downward dog. Come all the way back through. Lie down on your back. And we're ready for Sarvangasana, the shoulder stand. Bend your knees, lift your feet, lift your hips, and support your hips with your hands. That's the first phase. This is called shoulder stand. Remember, it's not a seventh cervical stand. So roll the shoulders under. If you can move further, you would now lift the hips higher so that your hands would move down your back until the body becomes vertical and toes point straight up at the sky. Keep some weight in your elbows and across the shoulders. Try to keep the seventh cervical, which is the neck lifting off of the floor. Keep the breath full and deep. We're going to stay here for a few breaths longer than the previous poses. So enjoy it. If you need to back off from the pose, please do so. Otherwise, keep the breath full and deep. Strong breathing. And now lower the feet toward halasana position, the plow position, taking the feet down on the head side of your body. Release the hands from your back, lace your fingers together and pull them toward the floor. Try to keep the spine lifting and still trying to keep the neck off the floor. If this is too much, back the hips away a bit so it's not quite so extreme. Otherwise, the breath is still full and deep. That's about three, four, and five. Now bend the knees. Let the knees come down toward your ears. Release your hands, but let them be flat on the floor behind you, right where they were. The breath is still full. Karnapidasana. Strong breath. And five. Now move all the way back up to Sarvangasana, all the way back up to shoulder stand. Now either just cross your legs and support your knees with your hands, or eventually you would place the legs in lotus position, supporting your knees with your hands. Stay in whatever phase is appropriate to you, and once again, full deep breathing. That should already be about three, four, 
This is like an inverted Padmasana position. And five. Now lower your legs toward your chest. Reach around the thighs and clasp your hands and continue to breathe deep. Moving into Pindasana position. That's two, three, four, and five. Release your arms. Place them on the floor behind you, palms down. As you roll the hips down, use your abdominal muscles and your hands to resist as you lower. Then the hips will touch. Keep your legs crossed or stay in lotus until your feet come all the way down to the floor. Now press your elbows into the floor. Lift your chest and roll your head under. If you're not in lotus position, if your legs are crossed, your hands would be holding on the thighs and pulling to assist the lift in the chest. Otherwise, if you are in lotus position, your hands would be holding the feet. You would be pulling the feet to assist that lift of the chest. This is Matsyasana, the fish posture, a nice counter stretch to the shoulder strand. And that's three. Deeper breath. Four. And five. Now, we're ready to move into Uttana Padasana. Release the feet from lotus or from cross legs. Lift the feet off the floor. Straighten your arms, palms together, pointing in the direction of the feet. The chest is still lifted. If that's too much to have the feet off the floor, you would leave the feet on the floor. Otherwise, the feet and the hands are extended. The breath is full. That's four and five. Once again, you have the option of rolling back out of this through your chakrasana. If that's too much, just sit up and jump back or wait. Moving through the vinyasa, if you've jumped back or rolled out and coming back forward onto your knees. In a kneeling position, you're now ready for shirshasana, headstand position. So, cross your arms, holding the elbows in your hands lowering the elbows onto the floor. That's how far apart the elbows should be. Now take your hands out, lace the fingers together. The top of your head should come to the floor, the back of your head cradled in the hands. Even though this is called Shirshasana, the headstand, truly the most weight should be on your arms. Now keep your elbows from rolling out to the sides and straighten your legs and begin to walk the feet toward your head. If you don't want to go all the way to headstand, you could pause in half of a headstand, leaving your feet on the floor. Otherwise, you would now bring your feet further toward the head, bend your knees, and move right up into Shirshasana, headstanding position. Keep the weight in that nice triangular base, that base that moves across the forearms from the elbows and across the hands, and the very top of your head. The majority of the weight should be distributed across the arms, the head being used for balance. Keep lifting all the way up through the balls of the feet. Keep the breath full and deep. Shirshasana also will hold a bit longer than the other postures. It's a very therapeutic pose. Keep the breath full and deep. If you need to come out of this posture at any time, by all means do so. Otherwise, remain in the pose. If you do have to come out of it, if your feet are still on the floor, you would just bend your knees and sit back on your heels. If you're still up in headstand and want to come out, you would bend the knees lower and then sit back on your heels and pause in child's pose. Otherwise, you might still be in headstand. Now we'll try a couple of variations for those of you still in headstand. Bend at the waist, lowering your feet halfway to the floor with the legs still straight, and pause there. Full deep breathing. Hold that just a couple more breaths. Three, four, and five. Now inhale and come all the way back up. One more as you exhale, lowering the feet toward the floor, this time just before they touch the floor. Inhale, come all the way back up to headstand, and then exhale and lower all the way down. Bend your knees, sit back on your heels, take your arms back by your sides, 
and pause in child's pose. Stay there for a few breaths. You don't want to sit up too fast after the inverted postures. So stay there. The breath is nice and full. Good. Now from there, take one more vinyasa. Jump back. Move through your upward facing dog and your downward facing dog. And come all the way back through. Sitting position. We're ready for the final three poses of the primary series of Ashtanga Yoga. They're all done in lotus position. If that's not possible, just sit with cross legs. Or you might sit in lotus or half lotus. If you're in lotus position, reach behind your back and clasp the feet. If your legs are just crossed, just reach behind your back. Baddha Padmasana. Lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, extend forward, bring your head toward the floor. Once you can reach your head to the floor, you would then work your chin toward the floor. Either way, the breath is full and deep. Stay with the breathing. This is Yoga Mudrasana. Now inhale, sit up again, keeping Baddha Padmasana, bound lotus, and release. Take your hands to your knees your classic yogi posture. Thumb and first finger touching, the chest lifted and open, the spine straight. The breath full and deep. You can drop your chin toward your chest. We're going to stay here a bit longer as well. Be aware of your locks, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. Draw the air in long, flowing streams in each nostril, totally filling the lungs, and as you exhale, completely emptying the lungs, using the abdomen and your locks to further empty the lungs. Don't force the breath, but allow it to become greater. Allow the breath to fill the lungs further by lifting with the intercostal muscles, the muscles between the ribs, and as you exhale, you can use the abdominal contraction a bit to assist the air out of the lungs. Don't use too much effort, though. Keep the focus on the sound, the quality of your breath. Full breathing. As you're breathing deep, think beyond the lungs. You're filling the entire body every time you inhale. Strong breathing. Very good. That should be about 10 breaths. Okay, we're ready for the final pose, Tolasana. Place your hands beside your hips. Now, we're going to lift up in a moment, and I want you to hold this for as long as you possibly can, or 100 breaths, whichever comes first. This is a powerful posture. It will engage all of your locks. Even if you cannot achieve liftoff, that's okay. Just press your hands into the floor, make the effort to lift, feel the abdomen working, and lift. Your gaze looks straight ahead, full deep breathing. I'm going to count to 15. Try to hold it for as long as you can. One, two. If you need to come down, please do so. Three, four. Keep the breath full and deep. Five, six, Seven. If you've already come down, that's fine, but keep breathing full and deep. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Full breath. Look straight ahead. Thirteen. Hold it. Fourteen. One more good breath. And fifteen. Exhale. Come down. Pause for a moment there, sitting up straight and breathing full and deep. It's okay if you weren't able to hold for the full 15. It will give you something to work towards. If you were able to hold for 15, then hold longer. Try to increase it over time. We're now ready for deep relaxation. So lie down on your back. Straighten the legs. Let your palms roll open toward the sky. Let the feet roll out to the sides. And completely let go from head to toe. This posture 
is just as important as all of the previous ones. It gives the body a chance to assimilate all of the energy which you've accumulated, the life force you've extracted within the breathing, the prana. It gives a chance for the body to absorb it and to channel it throughout the entire system. Release any effort in the breath. Let it go. Let the body sink into the earth. Just imagine the muscles now melting away from the bones, coming into a liquid state and allowing them to just seep into the earth. Leaving the skeletal system there and feel it settling into alignment. Feel a bit of space between all of the joints. Feel some space between the toes, the bones and the feet, and the ankles. Feel the knees, a bit of space between the knee joints, the hips and the pelvis. All of the vertebrae of the spine settling into alignment. The fingers, the hands and wrists, the elbows and the shoulders settling into alignment. The cervical spine, the neck, relaxing and lengthening. And now release all of that so that the physical body is gone, melting into the earth. And you're left with only a subtle body, the subtle energetic self, the home and the seat of prana, the life force, the life-giving force that is present within you and the world around you. The inner world and outer world are connected through this prana. Awareness of this connection within and without is the soul of yoga. The breath is the avenue for this connection. So keep your awareness in that subtle self. It may feel something like a flow of energy through the body. If there are any areas you feel are areas of weakness, you could send that energy there. Or just simply use it to revitalize, recharge, and renew the entire system. When you're practicing yoga, you're bathing every cell in oxygen. Just as when you bathe the body under a shower, you're cleansing the external body. When you're breathing deep, practicing yoga, you're bathing every cell in the body in oxygen. You're calming the nervous system and relaxing the mind. Allow this time in Shavasana to absorb all of the benefits from the practice. You've opened the channels from the postures. You've refined the pranic flow in the body from the breath and the locks. Now is the time to revitalize and to feel that deep, calm, place inside and to remain there in that space and to know that it's always there. Now I'm going to leave you for a couple minutes in silence to allow you to take yourself on your own journey and after a couple of minutes I'll come back taking you out of the deep relaxation
you can begin to come back now by just moving your fingers and toes slightly. And with a nice gentle inhale, raise your arms over your head and give a big stretch. Stretch all the way from your fingers to your toes. And then exhale and relax right there. Just completely let go. Now bring your knees up to your chest. Give yourself a big hug. Pull them tight into the body. Hold. Roll around on your lower back a bit if you wish. And then roll to one side. Release your knees. And just pause there in a fetal position. Completely let go again. Just melt into the floor for another moment or two. And now slowly sit up. And you can hold on to that nice, tranquil feeling throughout the rest of your day. Namaste.